Despite the fact that it was a rush title, I felt like Mega Man 3 was the first one in the series that didn't drive me mad. Don't get me wrong, there are definitely flaws, and I think if anything, my feelings are more indicative of the issues Mega Man 1 and 2 had rather than a praise for the third title. As a recap, I'm playing through almost all of the Mega Man franchise in release order and this is my third video in the series. And just as a quick plug, I upload these videos as completed for members of my channel, so if you don't want to wait around for my weekly releases, there's probably at least two or three more videos available right now depending on when you're watching this video. With more to come soon. Anyway, when I played through Mega Man 1, I felt like the Mega Man formula had taken center stage. What I mean by that is it's a terribly difficult game if you're playing it in a random order, but as soon as you figure out the correct boss orders and weaknesses, it becomes a breeze to get through. Which means, on your first playthrough, it's very experimental and, and figuring out each Robot Master's weakness is part of the fun. There are obvious flaws in how difficult the game is and how slippery Mega Man is to control, but as a whole, I felt the way the actual Mega Man formula was implemented was a testament of why this series is so successful. Mega Man 2, on the other hand, was barred by two big flaws. First, the difficult mode is too difficult to actually be experimented on, like, you need significantly more time to learn how to get through each stage comfortably and which order to move along in. While on the other hand, normal mode is far too easy, and you can fly through it without a thought. And perhaps the worst part of it all is the fact that the Metal Saw is such an overpowered weapon in that game, including its ability to make light work of half of the Robot Masters, that I find it pointless to bother experimenting with any of the weapons since there's no need to. You already found the optimal way to play the game once you got the Metal Saw. In essence, this didn't make Mega Man 2 a bad game, but it did feel like a poor implementation of the Mega Man formula. Well, Mega Man 3 sort of has the opposite problem. It's still a fun game to run through, it has a decent enough challenge as you get through the first 8 stages, and I thought the bosses provided a good challenge in all of those stages. But the problem was the bosses felt like they were easy enough where you could probably get through most of them without putting much thought into the weapon you're using. I never really felt at any point in time that I truly had to come back and repeat a boss fight after getting a specific weapon. You could probably run through most of the game with just a pea shooter, to be honest. Or likewise, as you get more weapons, you could probably use almost all of them at any specific time and they'd all be useful. So while it was a fun game to run through, the significance of the strengths and weaknesses of the enemies and weapons available were mostly an afterthought. This is the first game in the series that I don't feel the need to be a second time. Because in my first playthrough, I felt comfortable enough that by the end of it, I didn't feel like I needed to use any of my knowledge to drastically alter my experience in a second playthrough. Now, I did really enjoy going through the 8 stages, with one or two exceptions, but I'll get to that when I go through my experience. The issue was that after the 8 stages, you get to what I believe are referred to as the Dock Robot stages. Which are basically just 4 stages that rehash some of the set pieces from earlier stages, but with a bit more difficulty. I didn't really feel like these stages necessarily added much to the overall game. I didn't mind them too much, nor did I feel like they were crazy difficult. But the problem is, in each stage there's two Robot Masters, and there's some kind of variation of the bosses from Mega Man 2. So obviously you have to now figure out which weapon to use against which Robot Master, since you don't have your Mega Man 2 arsenal handy. The problem is, while the first 8 bosses were an easy and fair challenge for the most part, the Dock Robots were absolutely terrible to face off against. They were too strong, and when using the item they were supposedly weak against, they're beatable, but it's a challenge. And it's an annoying challenge, because up until you get to the second boss in the stage, because now each stage has two bosses, any earlier death takes you back way further than you expect, so you'd have to repeat a lot of the stage. And since the stages are a rehash of the earlier ones you beat, the game starts to get too repetitive and boring due to how much time you might spend on these dog robot stages. I think the difficulty of the dog robots isn't the worst thing in the world, I just wish the weapons they were weak against were a little bit stronger, and that you'd have a checkpoint right outside their room so you don't have to repeat a fight without redoing the stage. In an ideal scenario, the main 8 robots would have been almost as difficult as the dock robots and their weaknesses would have been a lot stronger. If that were the case, I'd say Mega Man 3's 8 stages would have perfectly followed the Mega Man formula. Instead, as it stands, it's a fun adventure, with a very hard second act. So difficult that in general, most people recommend skipping them altogether. And I think if I was to play Mega Man 3 again, I wouldn't bother with anything past the first 8 stages. Because after you get pushed through the ringer and finish with the dock robots, you're greeted with a third act that's more similar to Mega Man 1 and 2. Making the amount of stages in this game about one third more than the length of the first two games. I was actually really annoyed when I saw I'd have to go through a Dr. Wily endgame after what I endured through the dock robot stages, but then I had it all complete within like 20 minutes. 
It was too easy. In general, the Wily stage designs were very simple, and they also had health and ammo pickups splashed around the stage. Plenty of E-Tanks too. And in this game you could hold up to 9, so it made the endgame a joke. I'll admit, during my first 12 stages, I burned through E-Tanks anytime I got them because I did face a challenge in those stages. But in Wily's Tower, I was using them for fun just because of how much the game was providing them for me. The other thing that really made the endgame easy was Rush, Mega Man's robotic dog companion. Rush replaces the generic weapons from Mega Man 2 and gives you a surfing rocket you now have control of, a spring you can use to bounce to high spaces, and a submarine that works like the surfing rocket but it's underwater. The submarine was used like once, maybe twice, but the Rush rocket and coil largely took away any semblance of challenge in the endgame, and honestly made a lot of the earlier game easy too. By the time I got to the boss rush, I was bored of this game. It felt like it was starting to drag and that's 100% because of the combination of the time I spent in the dock robot stages and how painfully easy the endgame stuff was. The boss rush was also super easy because the robot bosses are already pretty defeatable, but now they're a flat out joke with all the health regeneration available, and the fact that you have a full inventory of weapons and can clip them away with their weaknesses even quicker. Even Dr. Wily was beatable in a couple minutes. Probably even less than that. Anyway, to summarize, I think the first 8 stages are fun and offer a good challenge, but don't offer a good implementation of the Mega Man formula. The second 4 stages have bosses that are way too hard and will probably turn me away from revisiting this game, and the final endgame is laughably easy. In future playthroughs, I might just do the 8 stages. The other thing I'd like to add before I get into my experience is the story is once again an afterthought, but there is some context that can be gained through the manual. But I don't really care enough to learn much about it. Proto Man makes his debut in this game, and I guess he's Mega Man's brother, which I assume will be relevant later in the series, but here he's just a jumping mid-boss. The colors and sprites are a great improvement over Mega Man 2. It's funny because while all these games look the same, you can see these ever so slight improvements with the visuals as you move through them. The music in this title slaps. Mega Man has some terrific tunes, it's no wonder they're used in so many YouTube videos. And most importantly, this is the first game in the series to include Mega Man Slide. It does take just a bit of time to learn its timing and figure out how to properly utilize its chain of slides, but once you figure it out, it becomes a very useful part of your movement and allows for more strategy during encounters with enemies and bosses. It feels like a natural addition to the moveset, and is implemented well in the game. With all that being said, who's ready to go through my Mega Man 3 experience? Alright, so the first thing I notice in this game is its off-centered start screen and a weird pixel on the stage select screen, so I guess this game was actually rushed. Also, I thought it was a nice touch that Mega Man's face was in the middle and his eyes were following the character select. I decided to start off with Magnet Man. You go through a fairly simple starting segment where some magnets overhead keep trying to pull you up, but it's pretty easy to get through. As soon as you drop down to the next area, you have a face off with Proto Man. He basically just jumps back and forth and fires at will as he goes along. He did drain my health enough that the boss in the next room took me out in one hit though. Second time around though, I was ready and took care of it and its missiles. As you advance, there are some sections with fans and generic grunt enemies you have to avoid until you get to your first disappearing block section. Nothing really special about it at first, you gotta keep trying and know when to jump before it shows up. The next section does add a bit of a mix by including a fan that's trying to knock you off the blocks, which I think is a neat extra challenge. Still, it should be passable. When you get to the next area, it's a disappearing block challenge over a pit. And beyond that, you can regenerate your health before moving on to the boss fight against Magnet Man. Naturally, he knocked me out immediately, but then I came back with a full bar of health and the biggest trick with him is to avoid his magnets that shoot in an L pattern, and then don't let him use his magnetic force to pull you into him. It's completely beatable. Next, I went for Hard Man because he looked like he was made of metal, and I had a magnet weapon. But then I entered the stage and noticed it was all rocks, so that might not have been the right decision. The intro area of the stage sees you dealing with swarms of bees being dropped from a hive, not too dissimilar to the birds hatching out of a dropped egg in Mega Man 2. It's an easy health drainer, but once you learn to time your attacks, you do have the chance to get a lot of ammo and health drops. At the end of this section, you have your first sliding area, and the next segment is a good chance to use Rush Coil for the first time. And lo and behold, as you advance, you get a plethora of chances to experiment with the Magnet Gun. It's pretty good if an enemy is above you, because it'll go straight up and move and hit them from below. The following area has you take on some construction workers, and as you move along, you have your next face-off against Proto Man. It's basically the same fight. Right before the Robot Master, you get your first encounter with a jumping variation of enemies in this game. It's much more beatable than the previous titles, but still offers a decent challenge. You have to attack when the eyes are open. Hard Man is another fairly easy boss. I wasn't sure if the Mega Attack was actually useful because I didn't have enough ammo, but I did have an E-Tank and he was easy enough to dodge and weaken with patience. Stage complete, Hard Knuckle released. Next, I was aiming for Shadow Man. 
It's a vertical stage, you drop down and face these little grasshopper-like robots. Naturally, I gave myself a game over immediately because I wanted full lives. Some basic enemy challenges ensue, and then another fight against Ponoman that once again goes the same as it did before. More simple platforming until you get to an area where the lights go out unless you destroy these bulb inhibitors while avoiding these literal running kamikaze grenade robots. It's a long section, but you should be able to get through it. The stage continues with some generous drops with these annoying frog robots and narrow paths. I think it's a good area to use the slide to get past them, but I wasn't really used to using the slide much by this point. The next area has you facing off against some robots slowly parachuting down. You're platforming over a bottomless pit though, so you need to be very careful because if you do touch one of these things, you're likely to fall to your death. Again, it's a beatable challenge if you're patient and smart about it, but don't be surprised if you lose a life or two. Finally, if you get through some of these fireflies, you can make it to Shadow Man. Naturally, I used my first life to experiment the weapons I had, but nothing was really working against him. I tried swapping to the Pea Shooter, but I wasn't able to succeed. I think if I had an E-Tank, I'd have one, but I decided I'll come back and try him again later. I went to Needle Man stage. Started off facing against these porcupines that fire needles at you and then curl up into a ball and charge. The next segment has you fighting some turrets and generic enemies until you go down the ladder and you have your first challenge while adapting to the slide. What's cool is that you can't simply rush through it, you need to actually do some shifting around to make it work. As soon as you pass that, you can pick up an E-Tank while hopefully avoiding a porcupine. In the next area I found the Magnet Gun to be very useful, but I did unfortunately have to use my E-Tank to get past the jumping enemy and make it to Needle Man. Again, experimented with what I had available and found the best option was the Pea Shooter. Needleman can be defeated, but you really need to keep your distance. It's better to take a hit from a shooter than his melee attack with the needle that comes out of his head. I kept my distance and I defeated him. Next, I went for Sparkman. I like the vibe of this stage. There are some simple platforming challenges involved avoiding lightning and plenty of chances to use a magnet gun to defeat enemies that have high ground, followed by more platforming and more opportunities to restock health and ammo at around the halfway mark. The section here with the dropping blocks was weird. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to get through them without taking a hit. I ended up not having enough health so I had to lose a life. When I respawned, I found that just running through them and not stopping was the best way past them, so I guess if you stop it's an automatic loss of a life? I'm not sure if that's true or not, but that's what it felt like. Finally, the last area combines the same platforming challenge with riding platforms from earlier, but this time makes it more difficult by throwing in some bad guys over it that you can't defeat immediately until their hitbox becomes available. In this case, the best way past them is to keep moving forward as fast as you can because if you stop to try a battle, you'll probably lose a life. Sparkman I found Sparkman very easy with the needle gun. Took him down without much of a thought. So that was nice. Next up, I decided to take on Snake Man. I stuck with the needles as I went through this coolly themed snake stage. The needles seemed to work well against all the snake turrets all over. I really liked the theme of the stage. I know it's all just different green and snakes everywhere, but it was very unique and it really stood out to me. Even as you pass by the snake's face and other animals, the stage still gives off a unique vibe. I did find these pole vaulting enemies really annoying, and it's only because after they pole vault, their pole also damages you if it hits you. Finally, you take a ladder up to a sky and use some floating platforms to ascend and move along the stage while avoiding incoming clouds that are actually wrapped around bullet bill wannabes. So you're better off not shooting the clouds, otherwise you also have to deal with the bullet. In this area, I eventually realized I had the rush jet, so I was able to surf across the sky and fire at will with ease, making really light work of the remainder of the segment before making it to Snake Man. I was pretty sure the needle would be good against him because it was good against all other snakes in the stage, and lo and behold, I was right. Next, Gemini Man. A really cool night setting that seems to take place on ice because there are some penguins throwing eggs at me and some flying robots dropping stuff on me. The area seems pretty difficult, but all the action going on meant lots of health drops, so I got through the segment with maybe half of my health remaining before dropping down to the ocean. I like the challenge in this part. You have to use your shooter to clear some bubbles blocking your path, but every time you shoot one, a bad guy pops out of it. Now that I think about it, I guess these are fish eggs and those are baby fish coming at me for shooting them. The next few sections are all a variation of the egg shooting challenge. There's an element of puzzle solving to it because you have to decide what to shoot and in which order to optimally get through. Finally, you go through a few sections of these giant penguin mid-bosses that keep chaining more enemies in your direction. When you get through that, you're offered a health pickup, and then you enter a water platforming section that is a bit of a pain to get through since I don't have the Rush Marine power up yet. But I did have the Rush Jet with low energy, so he did help me get through a good chunk of it, and I got two E-Tanks out of it before going up against Gemini Man. I lost my first life pretty quickly, experimented with a snake gun, and it worked flawlessly on Gemini Man. Next, I decided to go for a Top Man. The opening area has you face off against a chain of frogs and flying screws. After going against some of the giant top throwing dudes, the next few rooms have basic platforming challenges with enemies that we've seen throughout the game, but the nice thing is they offer you a chance to take more difficult paths to pick up ammo and health if you'd like. You also have to kill these giant cats, but they're pretty easy with a magnet gun due to how they're placed. 
The stage ends off with some platforming over rising and falling tops before going into Top Man himself. I once again opted for the needle gun, but I found most weapons work fine against him as long as you shoot him when he's not spinning and jump over him. Shadow Man, Round 2. I got through the stage with ease since I've done it before and I'm more powerful now. Finally, I made it to Shadow Man with an E-Tank. I tried a few different weapons, I landed on the spark gun and got his health pretty low, but when I ran out of ammo I was able to finish him off with a snake gun. Next, it was time for the Doc Robot stages. I tried the Spark Man stage first. I mean, it's a rehash stage. Nothing new to talk about except the enemy placement and some added spikes throughout. Just that bit more challenge to keep you on your toes. Rush Jet was useful through a lot of it, and the Ninja Stars were a balanced weapon that are what Metal Saw should have been. They're like a nerfed Metal Saw. They lose ammo faster and can't fly as far across the stage. Next, what I'll avoid showing you is me losing to the Doc Robot, which has been fused with Metal Man from Mega Man 2. And me losing meant I had to go back to the beginning of the stage, followed by losing to him a few more times before I gave up and looked up his weakness. And I gotta say, it worked like a charm. Well, I barely got past, but it worked. And when I defeated him, I discovered there was more to the stage. Once again, there's nothing new about this area except for the death traps and enemy placement. I made it to the next fight pretty quickly, where I once again found Doc Robot, but this time he was fused with Quick Man. I don't even think I bothered at this point. I decided I was just gonna go look up the weaknesses against this behemoth. In this case, when I died, I learned I spawned right outside the stage, which was cool. His weakness was the annoying Gemini gun that is super hard to control because if you miss, you have to wait for it to finish bouncing around. The Search Snake is also an option, but I found it too difficult. I decided I'd revisit the stage later. Next, I decided to go to the Gemini stage. Next verse, same as the first. It's the same stage, but more challenging. Still easy enough to get through without losing a life or really draining too much of your equipment. First boss here is fused with Flashman, and once again, the weakness is the Needle Gun, which I always enjoy using. I think I managed to beat him on my second or third try, but my health was super low when I got past him. The next area was the first water segment that I actually had the Rush Marine for, so that was fun to experience, but I'm not really sure why they even needed it. It's the same as the Rush Jet. Anyway, I was desperately hoping for a health drop and my prayers were answered pretty quickly. I avoided a bunch of the speedy little critters and faced off against the next Doc Robot which was fused with Bubble Man and beat him with the Spark Shock without losing a life. Next, Shadow Man stage. Tons of spikes on this one which made it a bit annoying. They upped the platforming challenge on the segments where the lights go out, but the Rush Jet removes any challenge that would have came from that change. First Doc Robot fight was Woodman's. That was super easy. I just used the needle gun and took care of him quickly. Some narrow pathways blocked by enemies and platforming while avoiding parachuting bad guys followed. And then I got to the next Doc Robot, Heat Man. I took a quick death to regain my health and unloaded my Shadow Blade on him while dodging his pattern that I was too familiar with from Mega Man 2. Next was Needle Man stage. Nothing really special worth pointing out about the stage, it's just a harder variation once again. And once again, Rush Jet took care of a lot of that difficulty spike. The first boss was against Airman. I'll be real, this guy took care of me real good. I was hoping to have a similar advantage like in Mega Man 2 where you could sneak behind him and unload the spark gun in his back, but it was just not possible. And I really wanted to save my E-Tank for the next stage this time. I even tried to use Rush Jet to fly over him and get behind him, but it totally didn't work. I don't even know how many lives I lost and how lucky I got to defeat him, but I did. The next area was a rush jet flying section, but I did have to be careful and avoid falling enemies everywhere. After that, you have to face off against giant metal sub-bosses. Am I pronouncing that right? Metal? Is that how... metal? Yeah. The grunt guys. Apparently, you're meant to aim for the cross on their helmet, otherwise they don't take damage. It took me way too long to figure that out. Thankfully, there wasn't a third metal because I would not have had enough health to get through another one. These mini-bosses actually felt like proper Wily stage stuff. Like by this point in the fight with Airman, I was starting to feel like this was a good challenging endgame. Albeit way on the harder end, but it still felt like a climax to the game. When I got to Crash Man, I actually just cycled through all my weapons because the recommended one was the top spin, and I did not have enough health to give that one a try. Still, it's mostly just jumping and dodging its crash bomb, so it's beatable. I finally went back to Sparkman stage, we can skip ahead to my fight against Quick Man. This time, I was prepared with more health and full ammo. I got into a rhythm of dodging and beat him with some snakes. Finally, Break Man. No idea who this is, so I'll Google it real quick. Oh, it's Proto Man's Elias. Not sure why I knew his name was Proto Man. Anyway, this is once again the same fight as before and is done in like 10 seconds. Oh, what's this, a cutscene? That's new. Santa Claus says Wily ran off with Gamma. Pretty sure Wily isn't spelled with an E, and I have no idea who Gamma is, but it looks like we're off to Wily's tower. At this point I was just at about 2 hours of gameplay, and roughly half that time was the first 8 stages and the other half was on the Doc Robots. After the challenges I just endured with the Doc Robot stages, I really felt like the game should have ended right there. And I was super disappointed that it didn't. 
I actually didn't know if I had enemy to face challenges as hard as what I just went through. Thankfully though, the next stages were a breeze. So the first Wily stage is basically just an E-Tank and health and weapon refiller, along with a chance to use all of Rush's abilities in one way or another. It's hard to even consider anything more than a bonus stage for the most part. They give you a few enemies to face off against near the end, but it's nothing spectacular. There's even a disappearing block segment, but it all really does allow you to refill your energy. But with how easy these areas were, I didn't even need a refill. The boss fight is against turtles in water, and it's not even really worth discussing, just because of how easy it is. The next stage is once again straightforward, and the only thing of note that's worth discussing is that it has the Yellow Devil as the main boss fight, but it's a much easier Yellow Devil fight this time around. Also, it doesn't look nearly as menacing as the last one did because it has these weird cheekbones. Next up, more easy weapon and health pickups with minor setbacks and chances to use Rush. Rush Jet really makes this last portion a nothing challenge too. And the boss is against holograms. Really, the only difficult thing is figuring out which one the real one is. After that, it's like four snakes will destroy it. Stage 4 is more of the same, but pits you off against the rock throwing dudes that I never really quite figure out how to defeat without taking damage. And at the end of the game, you get the boss rush, which I'm just going to skip right over because there's nothing I can really add to the conversation. These fights were easier than before because I had all the weapons this time around, and they give you a big health refill when you defeat them. I think the boss rushes are kind of fun the first time you experience them because if you're playing this game without using a guide, this is the first chance to really put your knowledge of the weapons to the test and annihilate these guys. It's a fun trope of showing how far you've come. Granted, I only feel that way now because Mega Man 3 is generous, so having to go through the rush without any real risks makes it super easy. If later games in this series slow me down because you have to do it all in one life or without tons of health refills, I might not feel the same way about it, and it might just feel like extra unimaginative, unnecessary, difficult padding at that point. But for now, I don't mind it. It's a fun flex to see how strong you've become. The only real downside though is after doing the dock robots, it felt very redundant. But I felt that way about the whole endgame, so it's not exclusive to the boss rush. After the boss rush, you get to restock a bunch and go towards Wily. The first phase requires you to get underneath him and destroy the turret, followed by quickly getting out of there and finding a way to shoot Wily himself. If you have full rush jet, the second phase should just be very easy. The final fight is against Gamma. I did some homework and figured out that there were some story points in the game that involved Wily and Light working together to create Gamma, and that was supposed to be for the betterment of mankind, but Wily went rogue and stole Gamma at the end and made him evil. Or something like that. I don't know exactly. I think I'm close enough. Anyway, prior to Gamma, you're given a generous amount of everything. You don't even need it because he's easy. You really just need to get up there and quickly take care of the first phase. And then a couple of top spin attacks later and Wily is defeated. <laughs> I love that they have you finish it off with the most useless weapon in the entire game. After you defeat Wily, giant bricks fall on the two of you and a mysterious figure saves your life. It turns out to be Breakman, aka your prototype or brother or whatever. I'm really not sure why we were fighting him through all the game, but I imagine someone well versed in Mega Man lore could answer that pretty easily. The game ends off somber, similar to Mega Man 2, with Mega Man running through a field with him staring off into the distance of what looks like an illusion of Proto Man in the sky. I don't know if he died or what, I might have to start researching the lore of this game at some point. All things considered though, I did enjoy this game. And I was able to enjoy it enough with a single playthrough, which is the first time for the series. I mean, it had its bad moments, but like I said before, it didn't absolutely drive me mad at any point in time like Mega Man 1 or 2 did. I feel like it dragged on just a bit with the Wily stages at the end. The Doc Robot stages were a little bit too hard, but after beating those, I don't think I needed any more to play. But all in all, this game is a game of three acts. The eight stages that I thought were enjoyable enough to run through and I wouldn't mind revisiting. The Doc Robot stages, which I'm glad that I accomplished, but I'll probably never play again. And the end game that it felt like was a waste of 30 minutes of time due to how easy it was. I've always heard that Mega Man 2 was the sweetheart of the franchise. I think there's been claims from some that Mega Man 3 is as well, and I definitely am in line with that. The inclusion of Rush and the slide move alone make this a more complete title than Mega Man 2. And the 8 robot stages are all actual real stages instead of something that's too gimmicky like Quickman stage. And on a similar note, while I don't think that the weapons in Mega Man 3 are balanced, I think they're much more balanced than what was on hand on Mega Man 2. But at the end of the day, when looking at the first 3 titles at least, I'm getting similar vibes I did as when I played the Donkey Kong Country series, in that I don't feel like these games have drastically changed enough with each inclusion to really separate them and rank them. Rather, I think it's worth just playing through all of them since on a repeat playthrough you could probably get through three of them in one or two sittings. I'm paying the series a lot of respect by giving each of these three games their own video, because the reality is I could have probably done 10 minutes for each game and it would have sufficed. Either way, from 1987 to 1990, 
Nintendo owners got these three games for the NES, and they cemented their legacy of the franchise going into the 90s. Mega Man 4 wouldn't see a release in the US until early 1992. In that time frame, we received three games on the shorter end that I'll be covering in my next video. Yeah, I'm doing the PC game too. As always, thanks for watching. Dean, out.